Hey folks, at the beginning of this podcast, the audio recording was not working properly. Hal and Anthony had jumped on board from his end and recorded the show for us from there. So uh, we'll start the, re- the broadcast here, or the podcast, uh, a few minutes into the show. So enjoy. Thank you. As long as everybody can hear us live, then, then that's fine. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, the recordings, uh, yeah, the, sorry, Pox, no recording, uh, or... The, yeah, the, the recording, if it's not picking her up, it's not going to pick you up, so. Um, Who's Striker? That, that's Poxified. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's going to call in after the next set, so. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, not that. I mean, that's cool, but um, <laughs> former Fleetwood Mac guitarist Lindsey Buckingham underwent sir, open... Underwent emergency open heart surgery that damaged his vocal cords. Uh, oh, well, that's a weird place for it to go. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why open or how or why open heart surgery would affect your vocal cords, but um, it says they aren't sure if it's permitted or not. Um, but yeah, hopefully he's all right. Yeah, he gives his uh, voice back. He is sixty nine, though. Right. I mean, so it's not like he's going to sound the same as he did when he was younger. But um, he got kicked out of the band. Yeah. But um. Huh. Anyway, I just I just read that, so hopefully he's all right. Oh yeah, this Adblock Plus is not working at all on here. I can't I can't look at Daily Mail with this. I can't cope with this. <laughs> I can't cope with this these ads on here. I'm not sure why it's not working, but um it's not gonna work with these ads. This is too much. Like I just clicked something in the wrong spot and a Walgreens ad came up. It's like you know, there's all these ads on the side and everything. Huh. I mean, I'm on the most recent version of Water Fox. I don't understand. I, I don't right, get it. Well, we'll figure it out tomorrow. Okay, yeah. I mean... Yeah. So, it's just not... It's, I can't okay. cope with these ads, dude. I, I, I can't. I don't blame you. <laughs> it's like in the middle of the page. Like if you're scrolling down on the page, all of a sudden, the net, in the middle of it, there'll be an ad. Right. It's like, whatever. Sure. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. That doesn't matter. We'll figure it out, like you said. But Yeah. Um, what else you got, Grim? All right. Well, this was a big day for the Bitcoiners out there. Okay. Uh, Bit Bitcoin surges as much as 10% on track for biggest ga- daily gain of 2019. Um, so it says there's a lot of uh, people taking advantage of the rally. Uh, Bitcoiners owners got a much needed break on Friday when the cryptocurrency surged to its highest level in more than two weeks, putting it on track for its biggest daily gain of the year. Uh, midday training at one point. Uh, Bitcoin was fetching $3,659, up 8.1% since Thursday's level. Uh, Cryptocurrency hit an intraday trading high of $3,704, a rise of uh, 10.3% after a prolonged period of suppressed price activity that dragged Bitcoin volatility index to a 12-week low. The move caught traders off guard. Yes, just a, a big move or not just a big move, but also a sudden move. Uh, The digital asset owners were quick to act, and there are quite a few customers taking advantage of the rally. We are definitely seeing a lot of profit-taking. A Toronto-based trader said said some industry participants were pointing to Bitcoin's hash rate, which hit a three-month high uh, for the reason behind the surge. Whether that's true or not, anybody's guess, you know. (laughs) <laughs> but but if hash rate goes up, that means there's more interest. Uh, hash rate is a measure of miners' performance, and a higher hash rate increases the chance a computer has of solving the complicated 
puzzles required to earn cryptocurrency. So uh, hooray for all the Bitcoiners out there today uh, that uh, and, and other cryptocurrency holders, by the way, which is me. I don't really, I don't hold any Bitcoin, but I do hold other cryptocurrencies and uh, always nice to see Bitcoin on the rise. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> I was, I was having some, uh, one, one of the coins I hold is the hemp coin, or the THC, as it's commonly called, and uh, it was all over the place. It was shooting way up to, like, 1,500 Satoshis, and then uh, coming off of a 300 Satoshi level. Um, but that was something to do with the Ether coin, and not to do with the Bitcoin, uh, because of a trading pair on a certain uh, exchange that it's on. So, whatever. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so there's that, Moose. What do you think of that? Oh, I was muted again. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This, this mute button is sensitive. Oh, okay. Well, well, so, but anyway. Well, so, so I what mean, do you I don't know anything about Bitcoin. I, I don't fucking, I don't have an opinion. Well, you're, you're, I don't know anything. I don't do it. I, I just don't do it. So. But, 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 don't, but is it a good thing or not? I think it's a good thing, yeah. Okay. All right, I, I have a, a page here that I'm just going to share kind of a link uh, with, with the people because it, it's too technical. Well, it's not really that technical, actually, to get into. But, see, I, I never understood these myself, although I have some of my own because mm -hmm. under the uh, one coin that I have, the uh, HTML coin, it allows you to create tokens and smart contracts, what they call them. But I, I don't really understand the whole smart contract thing. So I'm going to give you guys here, and the link will be in the blog tomorrow. Uh, but but what it is, it explains what a smart contract is, how a contract works, and mm -hmm. and uh, how you can benefit from creating smart contracts. So um, uh, just just uh, you know whatever. So little reference guide for you, in case you're interested in doing the tokens and the contracts and the things like that. So um, I'll give you a little bit here. Uh, Okay, it's a story. It's a story. <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived a fox named Fred. And every day, Fred ordered one large pepperoni pizza to enjoy all to himself. Until one day, the pizza never arrived, and Fred was, was hungry, lost his money, and had no way of uh, knowing what had happened. Because of this, he opened his own new pizzeria that uses smart contracts. When a customer orders a pizza, their money is locked up by a smart contract. The customers can track the progress of the delivery, and the payment is released upon delivery. Fred was able to build trust with customers and spend more of his time creating delicious pizza. <laughs> so that, that's the, the basics of the smart contract right there in a, in a short, weird story about this fox named Fred who must have been one fat-ass motherfucking fox. And he's eating a whole large pepperoni pizza every day. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that, that's, it. that's it for the crypto, uh, crypto news. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I do have a, a kind of a funny story. I... I guess it's a funny story. I, I suppose it depends on how you look at it. From 11alive.com Pantless man runs from police on a stolen golf cart and poops in the owner's garage. <laughs> oh my God, that's gross. <laughs> yeah. It says, it says, oh, why is this slid over like that? Uh, in dry legalese, the criminal warrant in Cobb County explains how one man ended up in jail for allegedly trying to run from police on a golf cart he just stole while basically naked. Uh, James Paul Kogan was arrested February 1st after a bizarre series of events that began with him allegedly burglarizing a home. Then, naked, the warrant states, Kogan pried open a back window to, to a garage before defecating there. Uh, uh, to wit, said the to wit said accused illegally 
uh, entered into said victim's home, a complete stranger with no pants on and his genitals <laughs> clearly visible. Uh, with alarms blaring, he then allegedly walked past the victim's room and all but ignored that he was being held at gunpoint, the Warren said. Uh, he, he instead went to a child's room, put on a yellow sweatshirt he found, and went for the door. The strange, <laughs> the strange tale gets even more unusual. Um, Oh, the, the the accused was operating a stolen off-road golf cart without any <laughs> pants on. Uh, <laughs> the warrant suggests that Kogan, now wearing only socks and a shirt, happened into a, a, a golf on an off-road golf cart and left the scene on the Poplar Strings and Springs and White Road. Uh, uh, but his escape didn't go unnoticed. The warrant states that police soon caught up to him and ordered him to pull over, an order he refused. Uh, said a fiant, I don't know what the hell that word is, a fiant, uh, was, was forced to pull in front uh, of a said golf cart and slow down in order to get the accused to yield. Eventually, the vehicle did come to a stop, but only after Kogan apparently wrecked it. Uh, the nearly naked man then made a push for the woods, where officers <laughs> continued to follow, still uh, giving commands for him to stop. The responding officer used a taser on Kogan, uh, the method that proved ineffective after deploying his taser said accused was completely unresponsive to its effects. <laughs> uh, wow. The accused then went uh, with clenched fists, turned around in a defensive posture and began advancing towards a, a fiant. I guess that's a cop. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it, it, it goes on to say that the officer was forced to utilize hand tactics to finally arrest Kogan. <laughs> oh my god so the, the the guy was in this this person's house and yeah. instead of, instead of going to the bathroom in the garage i mean in the in the bathroom right. he went to the bathroom in the garage on the floor yeah oh my god <laughs> it's just like oh my god he was obviously <laughs> fucked up he was on something yeah no doubt yeah obviously so. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Saw that and I just started laughing. <laughs> yeah, this is a story for you all, pantless man. All of you pantless man out there. <laughs> okay. Oh man! Wow. <laughs> the tape calls. I I don't get it. Like people get so fucked up that they don't know what the fuck they're doing. It's like, if you're doing shit like that, you're so fucked up that you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. Yeah, right. I, I mean, there, there, there's probably a lot of better ways that guy, I mean, if he wanted to, I don't even know what he was doing there. I mean, he, 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 all he did was take some socks and a, and a sweatshirt from a little kid. Right, yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So, oh, man. apparently, um, because of this cold weather, yeah, loud pops and booms have been reported across southern Wisconsin. Uh, uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin reports of loud booms, pops and booms, have been recorded across southern Wisconsin Thursday night. This is likely a result of frost quakes. A frost quake is a natural phenomenon that occurs when extremely cold temperatures lead to sudden deep freezing of the ground after it has been saturated with water. Right. When this occurs, the sudden freeze will cause underground ice to expand, causing soil and rock to crack, which will produce these booms and, in more extreme cases, shakes. You may also been he be hearing st these strange sounds in your home in which a similar situation is occurring. The materials making up your home can also expand and contract with temperature and environmental changes. The rapid change in temperature can also cause cracking and popping sounds in buildings. While the sounds can be eerie and cause alarm, there is really there isn't really a huge concern. Frost quakes are most not commonly reported with damage or injuries. What is of more common with the slash freeze is the potential ice on roadways. Anything that was wet or slushy, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. So frost quakes we've been having here. Yeah, those, those are interesting. 
weird shit happens when it gets really fucking brutally cold. Oh, hell yeah. It's like, and then when the snow, oh my God, people. So some people that live in Eau Claire and work in Eau Claire. Right, right. It took them two hours to get home on Tuesday. Yeah. And, I mean, well, they shut down Highway 53. They shut down the entrance ramps on the, the highway so no one could use that to get home, right? Right. And it just caused a huge mess in Eau Claire. And then it's snowing to beat hell, and people seriously lose their freaking minds when it's snowing like this. And they right. They don't know how to freaking drive in it. And it's like, dudes, chill the fuck out. <laughs> like people which, like they think they don't have to use their blinker. It's like okay, it's snowing. You still need to use your fucking blinker. Right. It's just like people were just freaking. Oh, I was getting pissed off too driving. It, luckily, it only took me like ten, fifteen minutes to get home. Right. But some people it took like two hours because yeah. although it was such a mess. Huh. And so, but for me living up in northern Wisconsin, I learned how to drive in, in snowy weather. And you get yeah. some people out there, it starts snowing, and they, like, lose their freaking mind. Right. And they don't know how to drive, you know? And it's like people either go too slow or too fast, okay? Because going too slow is not good either. Sure, because sure. Because it creates a huge mess. I yeah. mean, yeah, you're supposed to go slow, but when you're on a side street going 30 or less, you're not going to fly off the road, right? It's not like you're on the freeway going 70 or something, you know? Right. I mean, people just don't fucking think. understand how to drive in this weather. <laughs> it's ridiculous. People people just don't think. That's what it comes down to. No, they don't. It's like, oh, my God, it's snowing. I'm going to freak out. Yeah. It's like, you don't need to freak out. It's just some snow. I mean, yeah, it was a lot of snow. It was 12 inches of snow, so it wasn't like like a small amount. It was a large amount of snow. Right. But I was able to go. I went to the auto parts store. I went to the hockey game. You know what I mean? I was driving around while well, I have all-wheel drive, so that that is huge. Sure, sure. And plus, I know how to drive in it. You yeah. know? Right, right. The biggest thing people do is they brake too much, and they don't let the vehicle do the work for them. Like, they try to force it. you you, you got to re realize that vehicle's heavy. Right? Well, you know, you would think that uh, living in, in that area your whole life, you'd, you'd learn how to drive. And... Well, some people don't. Some people don't learn at all. Some people shouldn't be driving when it's normal weather, let alone when it's snowing, dude. No doubt. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was behind this one guy the other day, and it wasn't even bad out. It was like he was going like 20. And I'm like, what What the hell are you doing? You shouldn't be driving. Right. Well, but anyway, uh, I think everyone's going to be getting sick of it. We're supposed to be getting like 10 inches next week now. There's nowhere to put it. My driveway, the size of my driveway are already over four feet high. Right. So we're going to have to shovel it the other way and pile it on the other side. Or something. I don't know what we're going to do. And then the snowblower don't work. Hmm. Yeah, nervous drivers are bad, Rob. They shouldn't be driving that at all. You know? No. Yeah, I do not <laughs> like nervous drivers at all. I'm a, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a perfectly calm driver, but I'm a very nervous passenger. I don't like being a passenger. When I'm riding with Matt, it's fine. When I'm riding with Zach, it's like, oh, my God, I can't I'm, ride I'm, with you. I'm a terrible passenger. Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> I am, too. Oh, my God. I, I just, uh, yeah. Zach's like, don't do that, Mom. I'm like, hey, if I see you doing something wrong, I'm going to say something. Right, right. When I think you're speeding in my vehicle, I'm going to tell you to slow the fuck down. Sure. You know, come on. Oh, man, it's way better. <laughs> Good. I'll pretend I didn't see that, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> no. But, no, seriously, it, 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 there's a huge difference between, you know, it's like, okay. But, yeah, I I feel most comfortable when I'm driving myself, you know, when I myself am driving. Right. 
but I can ride with certain people only if they're a good driver. If they're a bad driver, I have a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go do some more music here. Um, yeah, let's do that. The, the, this is the uh, Poxified set. It's a, it's, a, it's a set of three songs uh, requested by Mr. Poxfied here in the uh, Real Liberty Media chat. And uh, okay. we're going to check these out. And then after that, he's going to call in. Okay. okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Enjoy, Enjoy, people. people. I'm going to let him take my dog out. out and so I might, I might I hear, hear all the songs, songs but, but I will be back shortly. So, so. All right, that there was Collective Soul with Shine. Oh, this is not going to work either. <laughs> uh, this recording is not picking. Wait, 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 I got, I got to. Let me, let me come back up here. See what the hell is going on. Uh, you guys hear me over there? <laughs> I don't know if this is working. All right. Uh, if I put that on, does that work? No, that doesn't work either. If I put that on, whoa. Uh, uh, all right. I, I don't know. Uh, I thought I had the recording figured out, but I hear uh, you now. I do hear. We do hear you. All right. Well, the, the recording wasn't hearing me. Um, oh. So, so I thought I had the recording figured out, but uh, I was wrong. <laughs> Over. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So sorry. No recording. Uh, anyway, that was a collective soul uh, with shine, and before that was Queens Rake, Silent Lucidity. And we kicked it off with corn and a twisted transistor. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the hell's going on with that, but, uh, yeah, freaking thing. I thought I had it figured out. Nope. No good. Darn it. Right. Oh, well. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get it figured out for next week. <laughs> so, apparently, the upper, the, the, um, northwest. Uh, area, Seattle area, is getting some winter storms this weekend, or this week. Oh. Let's see well, here. good for them. They need the snow. Yeah, they can probably use it. But yeah. this, I'm just saying, it just says rare. They must not get actual snow out there very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Pox 5, if you want to join the, join the call there, feel free to jump on in. Howdy how? So uh, yeah, you, you should see the thing there. It just should say, just say join call in your in your wire. The thing there, it just say join call. Yeah, what's the player? Wire. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You gotta put, mute, the, mute your player. Yeah, you gotta mute your player. Can you mute the RM player? Right. No, not not. Not wire. <laughs> oh, uh. He's new. He's brand. He's never used wire before. That's okay. No, that's all right. This is his first time. <laughs> that's okay. You there, Pop? Oops. Oh, okay, I got okay. it now. All right, all right cool. Right. Good, good deal. So, how you that, doing, man? No big deal. This doesn't go very loud. How do, oh. I, I don't know. How, it should be pretty loud. I, I, I had to hit speaker. I'm new to this app. All right. No, take your time. It's no biggie. Come on, Larry. I'm on the internet. Oh, I got I got to mute. I got to go. This side, he didn't have to go up before, but now he does. So I'll be back. All you right. guys just carry on, and I'll be back. All right. Okay. Okay. So you, so you there now, Pox? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah. I was going to tell about why I picked those uh, songs first. Um, all right, let's, let's have it. All right, the first one, Corn. I love Corn. They've been uh, Jonathan Davis has been through a lot of stuff. He's been through like child abuse and stuff, and he talks about it in all of his lyrics. And I love Corn. I've loved them throughout my years, and they just got me through a bunch of anger stuff and just helped me cope and just. <laughs> Getting that anger out of me and just nice because I'm just not holding on to it. And um, the reason why I picked it is because it uh, talks about a lonely life, and yeah, I felt lonely a lot. And uh, um, the uh, oh shoot, 
my memory isn't working right now. <laughs> but uh, the music listens to you all the time. Um, that's what uh, another message. And then uh, never give up. Never give up your life because it's worth living. And uh, just hang on. Uh, the second song, Queensryche, I picked that because um, an old friend of mine I met up in the hospital, um, he uh, um, left there, and I felt a great sadness when he left because um, I didn't grab his contact or anything, and it was like, it was just, I missed him, and he said, call your father a father, <laughs> even though my father was abusive, and he still is, but eh, I got over it. Taking care of my mother, though, and she's great. Um, glad I saved her life. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the middle part of it, it kind of sounds like my schizophrenia I used to. I used to hear voices in my head, like, be like a bunch of different stuff talking. It'd be like a radio station in my head. And uh, now that it's kind of gone, I don't feel it. I'm on the right meds and stuff. Um, then Collective Soul Shine, that's my other favorite band. Bipolar, I have the negative and the positive. <laughs> and collective Soul has been great for just feeling good. And, uh, um, and then it talks about heaven and stuff. And I believe God is real now. I've seen signs. I had a day with God, like up in the hospital. Uh, I kid you not. I sat down and had Jesus, uh, breakfast with Jesus. Big breakfast, like eggs, uh, it was an egg sandwich and uh, um, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> um, the next thing that happened is I walked into the lounge and the, um, the TV, uh, there was a girl on TV who said my name, Matthew. What? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not going any further with my name. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, the next thing that happened is a priest came in from out of nowhere, and he was looking for somebody who wanted to absolve all their sins. And I'm like, uh, are you using me? And then I went and did it, and it was like the most greatest feeling ever. And just getting that forgiveness and getting it out, it was great. Um, uh, I have a new favorite, and the final thing is I have a new favorite football team. Uh, the Patriots, because the Patriots will stick up for your country, and they're for New England. Uh, and uh, um, New England was where we started off. It's God's country. and Well, we stole it from the Indians, but it's God's country. I don't know how that makes sense, George Collins. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. All right. uh, but, um, yeah, and then they won the Super Bowl. So that was it. So, yeah. Anything you want to ask? Ask me anything, I guess. Well, I, I mean, you, you've you you've been away for a while. And, yeah. And you just recently came back, and uh, and so you were having a troubles, I suppose. And then... The health has not been so good for me, and um, also dealing with the abuse from my dad. Like, he put his hands on me, and then they sent me, and then nothing, did nothing to him. It's like, um, okay. I don't know, but I'm dealing with election now, and it's like I, uh, I don't want to put up with it anymore. But 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 you're doing all right now. You're not like uh, depressed or. Oh yeah, my meds are uh, very good. I I'm on like an antidepressant, I'm on an antipsychotic, so my meds are really good. Uh, I have alarms on my phone that ring. I have two phones that ring now. Um, one phone is like a backup. It like it just is always plugged in, and then the new one is always there. And the alarm app that I have is timely, and uh, it rings both phones at the same time. It's very cool. So I, I'll get up and take my meds unless they're not there. <laughs> I get med delivery, so that's cool. Yeah, no, but that's the, great. That's great. Uh, yeah, I, I you know never been a fan of. The meds, any pharmaceutical stuff, and the medical industrial complex, any of that, I, I dismiss it all uh, for, yeah. for me in my personal life. But I, I don't have those those, those kind of uh, issues that you're dealing with. 
And, right. Uh, I, I can't quite really imagine. Um, it's a living nightmare <laughs> when so, I'm off. You, so you have uh, schizophrenia. Yeah, I have schizophrenia. I have bipolar. Well, and I mean, does, does that mean that you, you have, like, multiple personalities? Or? Oh, yeah, I've uh, created multiple personalities. I'm, like, Death Spawn and all that fun stuff. <laughs> well, so, I yeah. wonder, you know, that's, that's Internet stuff there, but, I mean. I, I don't know. I think I'm mostly just me, but I don't know. I do, I do like, I do tend to copy other people and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah, every, this, every time I've seen you, every time I've seen you in the chat, you seem normal. Uh, yeah, when I'm on drugs or alcohol, that's one thing. I quit to uh, summer. I'm sober, completely sober again, and now, or, and uh, I quit nicotine and quit all that stuff. I'm not taking any more. Like uh, caffeine is probably the only drug I'd take, or willingly because I love it. But, other than that, <laughs> uh, and headache pills, that's the other thing. <laughs> headache pills, aspirin? Uh, yeah, I take an aspirin in the morning, a baby aspirin, but uh, if I ever have a headache, I take Excedrin. Which if is can... aspirin, right? That's aspirin. Aspirin, acetaminophen, and a little bit of caffeine. <laughs> okay. That's it. Oh, my God. And it says on the label, don't take more than what's prescribed. So, just as long as you, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. But if you just have enough, then it'll help. Maybe I mean, you know, it's not going to kill you. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> That's what they say, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't. You know, it, it <laughs> some things cannot quite kill you, but not really help you out. <laughs> right. Oh man! I am back room. All right. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, do you have any? Uh, you want to ask Pox any questions? <laughs> uh, no. It's just I feel your pain. I'm just proud of you for getting the help that you need and getting the medications. Like Grim said, he's not a fan of big pharma, but for some people, they need the meds. I mean, especially for things like schizophrenia or bipolar. I've known a lot of people throughout my life that have that have bipolar, right. and then my ex-husband, which we weren't together very long, but he was bipolar and also I think schizophrenic, uh, paranoid schizophrenic, which and he was the kind of person that would not seek treatment, so I knew that was a dead end and I had to get out, but so that's why I, I'm I'm proud of you for taking the steps and you know to to get yourself better. That's that's impressive. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. Proud of yourself. Yeah, my dad is like that. He 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 refuses to seek treatment from anybody. I've given him the number for life ways, and he just continues mm -hmm. crap. It's like he he's he's schizophrenic as well. When I get my I pull up my mom, but it's like uh, wow. So you're getting it from both sides. Yeah, yep. that sucks, Pox, but, uh, you know, hang in there. You can do it. You're doing the right thing right now, so. I'm in, I'm able to walk around. My ankle still hurts. Oh, that's yeah. another story. Uh, <laughs> ankle, get that up. Um, back when to 2015 or so, um, during the summer, I was hay baling, and I jumped off a hay bale on the top of a hay bale. Ooh. On the barn, I was stacking them up. Off onto a cart, one yeah. foot hurt, <clears throat> sprained ankle, um, and I had a fear of the government so much. I did not, I, I, I didn't like the government at all, and it was like I was so afraid. And that was my paranoia, and schizophrenia, probably. But, um, and I, I was also uh, not on Medicaid or anything, so I didn't go to the hospital. So I just. What I did was a dumb thing, but I went back to work because my uncle wanted me to work. And so I went back to work on it. And ever since then, it's been hurting on and off. There was probably a hairline fracture in there and never really healed right. Yeah. I don't think it was just a sprain if it was that much pain. Yeah, it is. It gets very painful. Whenever. Yeah, you probably still might have, like, a hairline fracture in there. A lot you're, of people do with their feet, and they don't even know it. Like, they just... They think it's, you know, 
it's a sprain. It's nothing major, but in fact, it is a actual fracture. Wow. Yeah, you're, uh, you're a pretty young guy, aren't you? Yeah, I'm 30 right now, going on 31. Just yeah, you're pretty young yet. Just a kid, just a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I still, I feel like I'm old, but <laughs> I got back pains. I'm over. I weigh 375, but I can uh, jump around and move around. I got strong legs. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, I got like very thick muscles on my legs. It's like. Any normal person would be like uh, crawling around. I do get tired, but it's like. <laughs> Is your home situation improved as far as being able to cook meals, real meals there, or not? We have tons of food, so but. Um, right, but that could. I'm just saying the quality of the food might be the issue. You know, if you're if you're interested in losing weight at all. Yeah, it's. I mean. You know. I just eat less of it, but. Well. That's good. Uh, but uh, that's yeah. good. It's okay meals. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. But uh, I just haven't really cooked uh, like anything big yet, new. But, right. Uh, I do know how how to learn. So. Um, right. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, you're sure. Uh, yeah, there's no question about that, man. I've yeah. I've seen I've seen your programming skills at least on the uh, Python <laughs> there, and yeah. You know, I used to be a lot more lazier um, because um, I'd just sit on the computer and then go to escape on my computer. And because of that, my room is a mess. Uh, I just, I don't know how it became a mess. It's like a hoarder's nightmare down here, and i got to clean it. I'm the only person who can clean it. It's like, right. So, man, live. I'm living. Other stuff works. Here's a Batman yet. <laughs> Thank God for that. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> and, I don't know what else to talk about. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I, I mean, if that's a, what you, if you, well, if you've said what you got to say, then that's good. That's all good. Yeah. I want, you know, I, mentioned earlier you wanted to come on and take some stuff so uh, yeah I'm glad to give you the time thank you um you want your show back or something let me hang up or something if you're done then, then you know we'll... uh, all right thank you for me. <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know what you're doing over there but i can't hear you oh me <laughs> yeah you were like moving around or something, it wasn't uh, coming Sorry, uh, peace be with you also. Hey, and with you, my friend. All right, bye-bye. All right, thanks, man. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it, sharing your uh, your life with us like that. Yeah, thanks, Fox. All right. All right. Well, um, apparently uh, uh, Hal is uh, recording the show for okay, us. Okay, good. Okay, uh, nice. and that's great. So he said, he said he missed the first twenty minutes or so, but what the heck? That's better, a lot better than uh, uh, having yeah. none, having no show. Uh, True, right? And, and I'll have to go back. I, and by the way, uh, uh, Hal, if after after the show's over, if you uh, want to just upload it to to your place there, I'll grab it from there and download it and edit out the the music and such, uh, and then put it back up where I where I need it to be. Uh, Appreciate it very much. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, it, no, it, keep going, Pox, on your journey. Uh, yeah. You'll get there. Just keep working, keep doing the work, and uh, more power to you. I hope you know everything goes well for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, look at that. Hansel snuck in as well. Oh, hey, Hans. <laughs> All, right, why don't we, All right, why don't why don't we do some music here? And, All right. And, uh, well, then we'll come back and uh, talk about whatever we want to. Okay. Sounds good. All righty then. All righty. <laughs> this is uh, King and John Lee Hooker. Do you? All right. That was a band called Donna the Buffaloes. And a song called Across the Way 
That's a Benoit request right there. Thank you for that, Ben. Uh, before that, we had Omar and the Howlers in Call Me the Rocker. And we kicked it off with a couple of legends. B.B. King and John Lee Hooker doing the classic You Shook Me. A little different than the Zeppelin version, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. So, uh, yep. yep. Yeah, I'm not sure how they got their name down the Buffalo. Um, I thought that, you know, no one in the band is named. It must, I don't know how they got their name exactly. I can look it up, but. Yeah, um, it's, it's just those two, right? I mean, yeah. no, it's a, there's more members in the band. Oh, okay. That was just them. That song was just them. Them. Right, right. Um. Just those two, obviously, but they call themselves a rip band. They just came out with a new album, Dance in the Street. Uh, doesn't say how they came up with their name. Huh. All right, well, maybe next time you meet Jed. I, I heard the story, but I can't remember now what uh, the hell. Uh, next time you meet Jeb, you can ask him. Right. Well, I, they played in Eau Claire. Like, that was rare for them to play in Eau Claire. It was like, no one could believe they were, like, but I know, actually, the guy, he he's a DJ at WHYS. Yeah. And he's the the guy that does the Bluegrass show. And he's the one that got them booked here in Eau Claire. And, and you used to be a DJ at WHYS. I did. I was. The radio personality. Right. I wish I would have done that at a different time in my life because at the time that I did it, it wasn't a good time for me to do it. And because my kids were young and they were in sports, and the other thing that sucked about it was it was every Sunday. Right. So that's part of my weekend. And if you work full time, you only get two days off a week. Okay. You really don't want to have like, be committed to something that's on a Sunday, which is on the weekend every week. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's a it's a one. big time commitment. It, sure. You know? Sure. And I, I mean, I wasn't too happy with our format myself. Going in, I wanted something different, and I was talking to doing something else, and that didn't work out for me like I wanted it to. It was fun when I did it, but I think it could have been better, you know what I mean? Right, right. But, like, I was so busy at that time that I had not a lot of time to put into the project or into the show. And so it was what it was. But, yeah, it was a big-time commitment. Yeah, you I know. enjoyed your shows. That's all, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, they were good shows, for sure. Um, but the... Like with Freaker's Ball, I don't do much prep at all because I, you know, I work full time. I like, I might bookmark stuff during the week to talk about or whatever. But other than that, I didn't hardly any prep work at all. With that show, we had to do so much prep work. It was unbelievable, you know? Right, right. Because you're on a, a public radio station, you know, and you have to like be professional like us here on the freakers ball we can say whatever you know we can pretty much we have free reign you know barring you know being vulgar or whatever you know what i mean i mean swearing's one thing but well he has a new headset Hell, yeah, and, so do yeah, I. and then I'm using yeah. my usb headset that i've had for seven years that i barely use so it's like yeah. brand new and it's still a little creaky, but uh, yeah. yeah I, mean, now, uh, I, I, I thought about the baby powder thing tonight, and I'm like, oh shit, I didn't do that. Uh. <laughs> anyway, health health says that my audio level is much better. Yeah, I've got it's a brand new uh, sound card and a brand new headset. Oh sweet! And uh, so it's every, everything's a little different on this setup. So right. It, it's not exactly what I was looking for, but uh, I, I guess it works. <laughs> and I have the new computer finally hooked up that I've had for, like, over a week. <laughs> but when I first got it, I did hook it up. And Grimner and I went on there, and he helped me get it all set up and everything. But there's still some things I'm learning because it's Windows 10. 
you know, which it's right. it's not hard. I mean, I'm not like totally lost or anything, but it's still a little bit different to get used to, you know. And I have to deal with this ad thing. I have to figure that thing out. Um, right. but other than that, it's it, it, the speed is insane. I can't believe it. It's like I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was due for a new one because I even like I even thought to myself today my computer at work, right, is Windows 10 and it's super fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like that's good. what I need. I need something super fast. I can't have this fucking. And then having to like re shut down, go to the task manager, shut down Waterfox every, like five times a day. That was like bullshit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you definitely need it. Where you're ready for a new one. Oh, I did. I was ready for a new one. Now I'm gonna get. So I am gonna go the TV route because I figure if I, it's a dual thing. It's a TV and it's a monitor. You know. Right. Yeah. No. It, it's it's a good deal. I mean, eighty nine dollars or. Whatever. whatever. Well, they were, they didn't have that Vizio one, Grim. When I went to Walmart, the store, they did not have that one for no, eighty eight. That's, that's that one I linked to you on Amazon. No, you linked to me a Walmart one. No, a Vizio that said it was available for at the store. No, no, it this, wasn't this, there. This evening in the chat, I linked to you an Amazon one. Oh yeah, that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, but I was gonna say the um. I gotta go to history to find that link. Anyway, um, the TV route's a good thing because it's HDMI anyway. I might as well just get a TV instead of a computer monitor. You know what I mean? Right. And that, that particular one that I showed you, it's, it's got uh, also VGA input. So. Right, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. the one I found, like you pointed out, did not have that. Right. Where is that fucking thing? Right here, I found it. It's a, it was the Scepter, right? I think so, yeah. Scepter. It's a good Scepter. It's a good brand. Okay. Yeah. All right. Eighty nine bucks. Yeah, I found it. Twenty four inch seven twenty P oh this isn't the one that has HDMI though. It does have HDMI. I can't imagine the T V coming out now that doesn't This is the one I picked out. This is this the right one? Hang on a second. Is that it? Uh that one doesn't show. I don't know. Let's say one. Hang on. Let me just. Uh, maybe. It don't matter. Whatever. It's fine. I'll uh, <laughs> I, I'll figure it out. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna get a TV instead of a, just a plain computer monitor because then it's a TV and a monitor, and that's what I've been wanting for a long time is dual monitors. It makes things so much easier, especially if you're doing extra things or broadcasting or something. Yeah. Um, having an extra monitor is just awesome. Yeah, it did. It was an expensive computer, but, you know, for everything that I do, I need a good computer. I need a fast computer. I can't have this crashing. I can't have this stuff, you know. Like trying to stream movies or whatever, that sounds trivial, which it is, but... It's like it's so frustrating when you're streaming something, all of a sudden it just crashes and you have to restart the whole system or, or you know, go to the task manager, shut it down, restart the browser. It's like it's such a pain in the ass, you know. Right. Anyway, I mean, nice, it's a nice computer, the one you got. So. Well, I mean, it was a lot of money, but I use my computer daily. Like every single day I use my computer. And I need a computer that works right and works good and is fast, you know. None of this bullshit, waiting for these pages to load or it crashes because you hit the wrong thing. You know what I mean? It was old. It's an old computer. It needs If that computer, for someone to use it, it would need an upgrade, you know, for it to be a good computer. Otherwise, it's a piece of shit, you know. Right. Anyway, that's, that's the right. That's the right monitor. So. What? I said that's the right monitor. Yeah. Yeah. TV. TV. Whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, HDMI. I, I have the HDMI cable already. Like seriously, people, I am gonna fucking do something that I. Well, we've done this before, but I am going to say to everybody out there, do not shop at fucking Best Buy. 
<laughs> Especially when it comes to stuff like peripheral, like an HDMI cable, all right? Yeah. Like, the only options they had were, like, $20. And the guy's like, are you going to get this? I'm like, no, I'm going to go to Walmart and get it for cheaper. And so I go to Walmart, and because Best Buy, I swear to God, they are over-fucking-priced. And, yes, they say they do price matching. So I tried to do price matching on um, the keyboard and the, the mouse, right? Right. And you couldn't see the model number. And I, it was the same thing. Well, sure. this isn't the right link, so I can't do the price matching for you. I'm like, that's okay, dude. I'll go over there and get in a Walmart then. I said, because yeah. I was just there, I said, but I just didn't want to have to drive over there because you guys have price matching. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. I said, that's okay. You know what I mean? I was pissed. I'm like, dude, it's the same. It's a Logitech wireless keyboard and mouse combo. It's the same one they got at Walmart. So Best Buy wanted fifty nine ninety nine. Walmart wanted 50 or it was yeah, fifty nine ninety nine at Walmart. It was fifty two ninety nine or something like that. Or at Walmart, it was Best Buy. It was more expensive, right? Yeah. So the, the, the price matching thing was like, <laughs> so I go get this HDMI cable, and it's a premium certified. You know, it's it's like not the low end of the the scale. You know, it's not the cheapest one they had, and it's it was like ten bucks. <laughs> Oh, great. I mean, and yeah, I could have got one for five, but it was, like, cheap as shit. I didn't want a cheapy one, you know what I mean? Right. But yeah, uh, what I was saying is Best Buy is over, even though they say they do price matching, be really careful. Make sure they do match the price because yeah. they are overpriced. That's why they do that, because they know they overpriced their shit. Sure. And then you they, know? Then they deny you figuring, well, they're already here. They'll probably buy it. Right, exactly. Well, too bad Walmart's, like, seriously, across the freaking highway. Like, Best Buy's on one side in the mall area, and Walmart's on the other side. But then you got to go over the highway. There's a bridge, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'll just go up, run over there and get it, you yeah, know. Easy enough, yeah. Right, it takes me two minutes to get there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck you, dude. With your, you know, he he was trying to give me a hard time. Well, I don't know for sure if that's the right model, keyboard, or mouse. I'm like, dude, it's the same fucking thing. Yeah. I didn't say well, that, but I was thinking that, you know. Right, right. I'm like, okay, you just lost my business and sent me over to Walmart. Way to go, dude. He should have said, oh, I believe you. I'll give you this. I mean, it's $7. Well, you, you know, you would think because they're basically right. going out of business anyway. Exactly. It's seven <laughs> fucking dollars difference, dude. And he's giving me a hard time about seven bucks. You know what? I said at that point, I was like, fuck it, dude. He's like, well, can you bring it up on your phone? And I did. I brought it up on my phone and everything. He's like, well, I don't see the model number on this. Like, I'm like, that's what I put in the search box, dude. And this is what came up. Right. Well, it doesn't show me. It's like, oh, my God. I was just like, okay, ne you know what, guy? Never mind. I'll yeah, go to Walmart have, and get it. You, you should have asked for a supervisor. Well, I should have. because Yeah, at that point I should have. But I'm like, and that was the night it was really super fucking cold and shit. That was like during that fucking Arctic blast. Yeah. We left our car running out there. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm like, you motherfucker. You're giving me a hard time about seven fucking dollars? <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, God. So Walmart, I, I bought it at Walmart. Yeah, well, there you go. All right. Um, let's go on to a story here. Are, are you familiar with uh, foot reflexology? Oh, yes, big time. Okay. And so you know that, that all the different spots on your foot. Uh, I mean, I don't have them memorized. I'd have to look at a map. Okay, but, but you know that all, yeah. all the different spots on your foot uh, react to certain organs within your body. That's because all of your nerve, nerve endings are in your feet. Okay. Well, here, I, found, I came across this this week. I was unaware of this. I've known about the foot reflexology yeah. for decades. Yeah. Uh, but this one I, I was unaware of. It's okay. on uh, TCM007, which I, I don't know why they got that name for their website, but that's what it is, TCM007.com. Okay. Uh, so here it is. Excerpt from Adventures in Chinese Medicine. Your tongue is a map of your organs. Yeah, that is true as well. And, and Correct. So they, a, they have a little picture here. It kind of looks like the Rolling Stones logo. Are you showing the picture right now? No. I, 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 oh, okay. I, I can do that. I can, I can you can post it. a link? Yeah, well, well, I will post a link, but I'll, I'll put it on. Oh, they named the storm in Seattle. Oh, they did, huh? 
Yeah, and why Jade Red cares? It's on the other side of the fucking country. Um, Which, I, I mean, I get it. I don't, it's not, you should care about what's going on. I didn't mean anything bad by that. So don't, <laughs> don't send me hate chat. Don't send me hate email. <laughs> right. I just corrected myself. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, so so here you see, like I said, it kind of looks like the Rolling Stones logo. Right, it uh, does, yeah. Yeah, no, so, I've, so you, I've seen that map before, yep. So you see you got a part up there, the kidney bladder, the, in the middle is the stomach or the spleen. Right, right. And then down here on the sides, you got your gallbladder and your liver, and over here you got your lung and your heart. Yeah. So uh, any, anyway, it says, uh, in my book, Adventures in Chinese Medicine, Acupuncture, Herbs, and Ancient Ideas for Today, and I don't know what the girl's name is that wrote this. Uh, it's up top somewhere. I'll find it later. Anyway, I wrote about the unique use of tongue diagnosis in Chinese medicine. Here's a short excerpt describing one of the many aspects your practitioner looks at when they are examining your tongue. In Chinese medicine, the tongue provides a map of organs. As you can see on the diagram to the right, different parts of the tongue correlate to different organs. The liver, the gallbladder are represented by the sides of the tongue. If the tongue is red in a particular area, it represents the heart uh, in the liver and gallbladder. Therefore, uh, pathological changes in certain portions of your tongue can indicate pathologic, pathological changes in the corresponding organ. However, the TCM, again, I, I don't know what TCM stands for, uh, views of the organ is not identical to the Western view, and you might misunderstand the meaning of the changes unless you are tra trained in tongue diagnosis. Uh, therefore, pathological changes in certain portions of your tongue can indicate pathological changes in the corresponding organ. However, the TCM view of organs is not identical. What? Has, did they repeat part of themselves there? Uh, anyway, uh, for example, the TCM, the tip of the tongue, represents the heart in, uh, in an emotional sense. Uh, practically, this means that your tongue is a, a very red tip, heart in an emotional sense, it's quite likely to be your, your shen, the spirits and emotions, that is disturbed. Your tongue is pretty amazing when you think about it. Vast amount of information it offers. I uh, hope you grow to have a greater appreciation of how important your tongue is and how valuable a tool it can be when uncovering the imbalances uh, that exist both emotionally and physically. So um, yeah, Jennifer Dubowski is her name, apparently. And uh, here's a link to that for you. And again, that link will be in the blog tomorrow. So uh, look for that. Um, I, I, I'm, a, cool. I'm a big fan of the foot reflexology. Oh, I love it. it, it it's so, if, if you've never had a foot massage, I recommend getting a fucking foot massage. You, you, yeah. you, will, you will be like, why did I never do that before? That's how right, you will feel. Right. If, when you, even if you go to a pro professional, or you go like have a friend do a foot massage for you, you will be like, oh my fucking god, yeah. why didn't I? Not? <laughs> As Samuel L. Jackson said in Pulp Fiction, <laughs> I'm the foot fucking master. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want to find. Yeah, no, I'm good at foot. You massages. know, someone that says that around you, I would seriously hit him up for a foot foot massage because uh -huh. it it will blow your fucking mind, dude. Uh -huh. I'm very good at foot massages. In, uh, in all right, uh, I'll remember that, Grim. All right, all right. All right. You ever, you ever, you ever meet in person? I'll... Yeah, I'm gonna hit you up for a fucking uh, foot massage. Right? Trust no one. I'm the Prostitution should master. be legal. I agree with that. And prostitution should be, should be legal. I mean, it's been going on since the dawn of time. Just like weed's been here since the dawn of fucking time, because it's a fucking plant. Absolutely. And prostitution's been going on since the dawn of time since there have been people that well, have right. sex. So as soon as oh. it was a man and a woman and the woman... Right. If it's yeah. consensual, I don't give a fuck if you're paying, or <laughs> paying them for it. If it's consensual, have at it. Yeah, it's been absolutely. going on no matter what. You know what I mean? It's going to go on whether it's legal or illegal. Same with people smoking weed. Same with sure, people doing sure. the drugs. It's going to go on whether it's legal or illegal. Like the one time I remember getting into this debate with my children, and I said, okay, so murder is illegal, right? They're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's against the law, right? I'm like, they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, does this stop people from doing it? 
They're like, no. I'm like, exactly. Exactly. Just because it's a law doesn't mean people aren't going to do it. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid things to eat people. Yeah, things. it's just like, okay, to me, you know, murdering someone is a fucking act of cowardice. Unless it's self-defense, like true self-defense. Murdering somebody in cold blood is a, you're a fucking coward. You know? I don't, I don't know what to say about that, but I'm not sure. But you know, I'm I, I'm I'm I won't do that. You know, not unless I'm defending myself. I'm not going to make no guarantees. You know, right? If I'm defending myself. I might defending myself. I might kill your fucking ass. You know, <laughs> but if you're attacking well, me, then well, I have well, a right to defend myself. See, see, Meister Brass says, "What if they deserve it?" Well, that's the thing is, who am I right. or who are you to decide that they deserve to die? Right. If they yeah, hurt we're, somebody, we're, if they we're, rape we're somebody nothing. or we're, something. We're nobody. We, 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 we're not the ones to, to determine that. To shit. judge. Right. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. you know, that, that's like the ultimate form of theft. Um, uh, stealing stealing somebody's life. That's, that's right. the ultimate form of theft. Right. So, uh, I mean, I understand being angry and want revenge and stuff. Yeah. You know, if, if someone hurts someone that you love or kills someone that you love, you, you, you're going to be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> That's human nature. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. You know, it used to be back in the day where they had, like, you know, in certain certain places, not maybe big cities or whatever, but in certain rural places, kids brought guns to school with them. They, it, you know, it was a hunting thing, you know? Sure, sure. I mean, if if someone wants to kill somebody, guess what, motherfuckers? They're going to fucking do it. Oh, absolutely. Whether it's with a gun or a knife or something or fucking goddamn radiator fluid. Right. You no, know, if, if if someone's the, you know, there's more than one way to kill somebody than just using a fucking gun. That's oh, sure, that's sure. one of the the bitches I have about this gun control crap. <laughs> it's like, dude, anything can be a fucking weapon. Right. Just a ball. Yeah, yeah, anything. Any sharp or hard object, you know. Right. And I mean, some people, you know, you don't even need that. You can just use your hands. Right. I mean, yeah, my your uh, someone's elbow. You can fucking break someone's nose with your fucking elbow if you wanted to. Uh, I'm saying, so what are we gonna do? Ban elbows? No, we can't ban elbows because it, no, it's re see how ridiculous it gets. Right, you just punch like, them in the it, trachea and, and break their windpipe. Right, or poke them in the eye. Well, that's not gonna kill them, but yeah. Well, no, but it's gonna stop them. <laughs> Kick them in the balls, you know that type of thing. Yeah. But that's self-defense. If you're doing this to somebody, it better be in self-defense. You don't yeah. just go around kicking people in the balls and breaking their nose with your elbow. I mean, come on. Right, right. That, you know, that that would be wrong, right? But that's it, wrong it because be wrong. it is just wrong to do that because you wouldn't want, a human wouldn't want that to, done to them. No. Right? No. So you know inherently being a human that that's a pretty shitty thing to fucking do to somebody unless they fucking deserve it like they're attacking you. Goddamn right. You know, if they're attacking you, then sure, have at it. But right. you can't just go around walking down the street elbowing people in the nose. It, that doesn't work, see? No, that's no good. No, but the reason people don't do it is because they know that uh, to, to be human and have that happen to you it totally fucking sucks. So they're not going to go around doing that to other humans, you know what I mean? Let's hope not, yeah. And no law says that you shouldn't go around elbowing people in the nose and breaking right, their nose. Right. Yeah. So, but people don't do it unless it's self-defense. Good. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, God. I mean, I, I the owning of guns. I I am all for the Second Amendment. I'm all for it. I'm all for you know guns being all right. I was going to say legal, but yeah, no, I, I, you have the right to defend yourself. I don't care what any any right. writes down on a piece of paper. You have the right to defend yourself against whatever right. uh, you know, some local aggressor or the state. Or, exactly, or, or the globalists, whoever, anybody is that, right. that that is wishing to to do you harm, uh, you have the you have the right to defend yourself against that person using right. 
anything you have available. Any force or weapon you have at your disposal. And you should have whatever is available, available. And so that, a couple of, like, when I was taking him back to school after break, we got in a debate about gun control. He said, no, they, they should control certain guns. And I'm like, dude, you know what happened in Australia? He's like, what? I'm like, the only people that have guns in Australia right now are criminals and cops. I'm like, what's wrong with that? Right. You know? He didn't He didn't have it. I don't remember what he said or whatever, but... Well, yeah, but he probably said something like that. But <laughs> it's like, dude, think about that, though. You yeah. don't want that. You don't want that scenario. You don't want only the bad, quote-unquote, bad guys and the cops having all the guns. That doesn't work. You want to be like Switzerland, where everybody's armed, and they okay. give you a gun when you turn 18. I, I don't really know that something you want like to be that. like Switzerland. Something like that. They give you, or they make you go through gun training. Or something like that, but there's very low crime in Switzerland because pretty much everyone's fucking armed there. I I, I took a uh, hunter's safety course when I was like eight or nine years old at the boys' club. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we used to just be a boys' club. Remember that? They still do hunter safety here in Eau Claire. You you remember? You remember the old days when it was the boys' club? Yes, I do (laughs) remember that. I'm old enough to remember that, unfortunately. <laughs> the Boys Club of America. Yeah. Yes, I do remember yeah. that. But I do remember being a girl, and even though it was called the Boys Club, we still, girls were still able to go in back oh, in the yeah. 70s, yeah. and they had girl restrooms and girl locker rooms. and our, Yeah. So it was all, it, they changed it. They just took a while to change the name, Grim. Well, I don't remember seeing any girls in the one I was at, but. Now you're seven years younger, so older. I mean older. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's great. I mean, I have those mini crossbows that I've, you know, yeah, I've no, never taken all. I've never practiced with them. I've never done anything, but I have them. Sure. You know, the government probably think, oh no, you, you should probably them up, you know, those, just but. set set up some boxes in your basement or something like that, and. Put little targets on them and check them out. Right. You know, I mean, I have to learn how to use them before I can right. actually yeah, yeah. do them because knowing me, they'll be like, you know, I'll have someone that's like trying to attack me or something. Or or I'm trying to kill a deer. I'm sitting here fucking well, around. Gonna, you know, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> you're not going to kill a deer with those. But um, you could if kill you a squirrel. If you hit the right spot, you could. You, you, you could just have to be pretty close to them, fucker, though. You, you could kill a squirrel or a rabbit. Oh, you think? Oh, oh, I think. Oh, yeah. You probably need a bigger, just a regular bowl for a deer size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those Animal. Little, those little ones. They, they 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 just don't have the 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 thrust. Right. Probably not. But it would stop a human. Oh yeah. I mean, if they were coming, if they were that close to you, sure. Right. You, you're not gonna get walk up to a deer. You know. No, no. You you have to when you bull hunt, you have to wait for the deer to come to you. Yeah, so you got to be a good at least fifty, hundred, two hundred yards be away. You got to be the fucker. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that and that thing's not going to carry you like that. So. No. Right. Yeah. But you know, I mean, the boys wanted me to take them out, but it's like no, they were like ten when I got them or something. Yeah. Or nine. It's like no, no. I am not showing you guys these things. You know. I saw how they were yeah. with um, with um, airsoft guns, right. and I was talking to a cop about an ex-cop about an airsoft gun, you know. And the thing with airsoft guns is, from a distance, they look like a real fucking gun. And if a yeah. cop sees you with a real fucking gun and you don't drop it, they're gonna shoot you, regardless yeah. if it's a real gun or not. Right. So I remember when my kids were using those airsoft guns, and I, mean, I was like, wear safety goggles, you know, which they did. I said, you cannot play with, use these unless you have safety goggles, because they could take out an eye, right? Sure. Well, they, they probably put the safety goggles on and took them right off when I, they were out of my sight, you know. But I said, you need to stay in the backyard. Cause we don't want, I don't want no cop driving by and seeing some kid running in my front yard holding a gun. 
something that looks like a gun from a distance, which it did look like a gun from a distance because it wasn't in the shape of a gun. It was just an airsoft gun, not a real gun, right? Right, right, right. And so I was just like, stay in the backyard with them. You know, if a cop sees you, you stop, you drop that motherfucker. You know? Yeah, oh yeah. So I was so thankful when I got out of that phase. But I was talking to a cop, ex-cop, and... And I have to say that if I was in a cop's position, which is true, if that 14-year-old, I mean, that 14-year-old in Arizona or whatever, they shot him in the back, which which I have a problem with, which if he was running away, no way should that cop have shot that kid, Certainly right? Certainly not. No, no, absolutely no. not. But, and it turns out it was an airsoft gun. But at the time, that cop didn't know it was an airsoft gun. But either way, that cop was in the wrong because he shot somebody that was running away from him. Right. You know, which they're not a threat to you if they're even if they are armed, if they're running away from you, they're not turning it and pointing that gun at you. You know what I mean? They're running away from you, yeah. right? Absolutely. Which, so that's cowardice to me. It is. It is. Shooting someone in the back is bullshit. Yeah. Oh yeah. If that kid was turned around, faced at him, and pointed that gun right at him, I can see because from a distance, that cop didn't know that was an airsoft gun. But that's not the case. The kid was running away. You right. know, so that cop was in the wrong. Yeah. I I don't I I like trap shooting. I you know um I remember when I went and visited my aunt down there in, in down south and she was from Ashland Kentucky. Mhm. And she carried a derringer with her like she had a derringer. Okay. And so and she showed it to me and. And she's like, oh, yeah, when I, she was my aunt, she was married to my uncle, my mom's brother. Oh, yeah, when I went on the first date with your uncle, or when the first couple of dates, I had the derringer with me in my purse. You know? And so right. I thought she was cool as shit, because she showed it to me and everything. So that's what I wanted. Because yeah. I wanted it to be for, like, self-protection in closed quarters. And that's the best kind of gun in that situation, because it's small. Right? Mm-hmm. But so that's the kind of gun I've I've always kind of wanted to have as a Derringer. Yeah, sure. Cause they're fucking badass, dude. I guess <laughs> you can put it right in your purse, though. Right? No, they're, they're definitely women's guns. You can stop an attacker with a fucking Derringer, dude. If you shoot them in the right location. Right off the coast, stuff, sure. Yeah, then that's that to me is better than mace. I mean, mace would work, but. Yeah, you know, mace doesn't... You gotta get it in their eyes. With a gun, you can shoot them in the fucking nuts, you can shoot them in the knee, you can shoot... You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean... But, but, but you know, you, you pretty much want to uh, aim for center body. Right, right. Yeah. yeah that, but it will be... stop an attacker. Yeah, oh, sure. Oh, sure. I don't know how big the bullets are. I think, are they 22? No. Yeah, they're probably... Probably 22. I think they are. Yeah. I don't know. But I've seen them. They're pretty, they're actually like, you know how girls are. It's a cute gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get a little it's pink. It's small. You, you get, you get it, a little, it's in my purse. <laughs> yeah, you get a little pink derringer. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, let's play some more music here. Okay, let's do that. And, uh. We'll be back after we'll this. We'll be back. We shall. Enjoy, yeah. people. Absolutely. This guy by the name of Donovan. All right, very nice video there. Pink Floyd, Money, a Cowboy Tech Request. Excellent stuff. Uh, before that, we had Feeding Leroy, which was a Musco request, with a Tennessee Devil. And we kicked it off with Donovan and Mellow Yellow in the quite uh, provocative video there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mr. Monroe's Retro. He, uh, he knows how to make some videos. Uh, anyway, uh, good stuff. Yeah, so I am thinking of purchasing a firearm, but I think I should start with a Derringer. I just think it's something about it that doesn't freak me out because it's small. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. Does that make sense? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one my aunt had was all fancy. Hers is all, like, carved and everything. But I see they have some of those. Those are probably really expensive, you know. Oh, yeah, probably. I mean, I just want to... One, star, you know, I think people should have, like, three guns. Like, you know, like a personal defense one, like a Derringer, and like a handgun, and a, a hunting gun. You know what I mean? A hunting rifle. Okay. But you have the Mossberg, which is a rifle, but that obviously can be, be used for self-defense as well. It's a, it's a shotgun. Right. But the thing with the shotgun is, you know, it's got that long barrel on it. And it's not, you know, a handgun's nice because it, it's easily concealable. Like you can put it in your pocket or something. You know what I mean? Or put it in a holster. You can't right. really do that with a shotgun as easily, uh, you know? You can't, you can't really conceal carry with a uh... A shotgun. A shotgun. No. no, no, you can't. No, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. no so that's what I'm saying, Grim, is like different gun for different circumstance, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like one's for hunting, one's for self-defense, one's for fucking, you know. Yeah, you got to have the right tool for the job. Exactly. Right. Yeah. No, we, we, it's not that we don't want to hear it. Pox, it's just that it's 1232 and we're going to be going to the last set in about 10 minutes. What, so, what? what? He, he wanted to come and tell more of his story, but. Oh, yeah, next week. It's like, man. we just don't have time. We ran out of time, buddy. Right. I, next I mean, week. next week. Yeah, next week, next time, whenever, whenever you want. We want to hear it. It's just, um,. I did. I didn't. I. I. The reason I told you we're out of time is because we are. I mean, he's going to play the next, the last set in about ten minutes. Whenever you have time, Pox. It doesn't. You know. Don't worry. Don't. Don't stress about it. it doesn't have to be next week. It can be whenever. You just keep doing your your thing, and you're good. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Good to right. hear it. Right. Right. Yep. <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad you're not stressing because yeah, that's not a good thing to do. <laughs> no, no stress. All right, right. Now, let's let's uh, let's get. I, I don't know why I wanted to, to cover this story, but I did. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Seal poop thumb drive mystery partially solved as owner steps forward. Yes, you heard me. Seal poop thumb drive. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> on, on Tuesday, scientists in New Zealand announced they discovered a working USB drive in a sample of leopard seal poop that they hoped to return to its owner. In a surprise twist, the drive contained photos and videos of frolicking sea lions. Now the owner of the fecal flash drive has come forward to tell her story. The researchers at the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research were no fools when they posted a blog. What's going on there? Hang on a second. My, my. Oh, that should be right. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, something went, went blank and I had to. Anyway, uh, they posted a blog with a sample image from the USB drive's content. They explained the device was found in a scat specimen that had been frozen for more than a year. Well, they were happy to return the USB stick to its rightful owner on the condition that the owner send them more more seal poop. <laughs> In a matter of hours, the Internet did its thing and found that the drive belongs to New Zealander Amanda Nally. Uh, Nally spoke to the local outlet, the project, about her experience discovering that her, long ter her long-forgotten gadget had become a viral phenomenon. She said she she saw her own video footage on a promo from the project and immediately recognized it. I feel bad here because I, I feel like I'm ruining a really good story. She told the project, "The truth is, I'm, I'm really I'm really quite seal focused, and I found the leopard seal out on a ready beach, and I'm guessing I dropped the USB stick in the seal poo on the beach." <laughs> Uh, Nally isn't really so much ruining a good mystery as she is deepening its contours. The NIWA scientists claimed the USB drive was deep inside the seal poop sample and was collected by a local vet who sent it to the lab back in November of 2017. It's very worrying that these amazing Antarctic animals have plastic like this inside them. Of course... They didn't. She dropped it in the seal poop, but whatever. Uh, the, the researchers lamented, uh, did Nally drop the device in the poo, or did it survive a seal's digestive tract uh, in a year in a year of being frozen? 
Yeah. That's a hell of a flash drive. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what a seal eat a USB drive. Have you ever seen uh, this seal? It's got a picture, a link to a picture there. With an eel stuck up its nose. Uh, anyway, Nally told Motherboard that the drive can save, f contains some of her favorite footage as uh, she has backups. So the chances of her sending more poop to the scientist seem slim. <laughs> Anyway, I just thought it was a funny, kind of interesting story. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People out there dropping their flash drives in the seal poo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, funny. So there's, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's... It would be hard if it, to broadcast if you don't have a, a, a desktop box. You, you should, you know what I mean. I, I mean, I'm sure it can be done with a phone, and I know Vinny's done that, but it, it just, it's not a good Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. way to do it. I, I guess because you got to have a desktop or a laptop. Yeah, yeah. No, lots of people, uh, lots of people broadcast with phones. You see them at the right, but it's not easy, and you got to have a really good phone, a really good Wi-Fi, a really good connection. You know what I mean? Well, if he's got computers, oh, oh, then you're good then. Yeah, he's... you're good then. You can do oh, it. Oh yeah, he's definitely got computers. Well, if you yeah. got computers, then you're fine. He's, he's got the ultimate setups going on there. All right, well then you're you're good to go. Then we can just you know get you set up and. You could be broadcasting, no yeah, problem. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the boxified. And show. don't be afraid. I mean, you look, you sound good on the radio. You're very clear when, and you're very succinct. You know, we can hear, understand every word you're saying. Um, and it, it's clear. So, and part of it could be because, you know, no, Grimner didn't upgrade his computer, but you sounded good on the air. You sounded. What? You upgrade your headset, so that would have nothing to do yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Headset. Right. So that's why I said never mind. <laughs> no, that's not the same thing. Anyway. Oh, right, right. Okay. But it, anyway, no. Go ahead. <laughs> well, anyway, this next story, I don't really want to talk about the story. I just <laughs> want to talk about something about the story. <laughs> There's a guy that works at the National Enquirer. His name is David Pecker. And apparently he said he's got uh, dick pics of Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. Right? And, yes. And, he, and, and he's threatening to uh, publish these, these photos as, as blackmail uh, for that. And, and my question is, I, I don't care if he publishes these or not. I have no interest in... Yeah. Uh, in in the uh, dick pics of Jeff Bezos, right? My, who cares? My, my, who gives a shit? No, no. no, no. My my question is, why does he have dick pics of Jeff Bezos? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, dude? What is your deal? Like, you know, it's because he's got a lot of money. Okay, whatever. It's like, <laughs> and besides that fact, who? Why is it headline news in the Daily Mail for three days? <laughs> about this motherfucking rich bitch getting the divorce. And you know what? His wife knew he was fucking around. It, it's not, you know... Who, who's, who's getting who a divorce? who cares? Who gives a fuck? Who's getting a divorce? Bezos. And you, you haven't heard this story? Oh, no. I, I don't really pay attention to all that. Bezos. And, okay, so Bezos, but, some photo was released of, released of Bezos and his, like, lover that he's been having an affair with. You know, the wife probably knew about it. She was probably fucking somebody else, too. But all yeah. of a sudden now, the National Enquirer is getting... It's just a huge distraction thing. It's like, okay, I don't give a fuck about this guy. <laughs> I, yeah, he owns Amazon, and he's a rich fucker. Yeah, but richest dude in the who world. who gives a fuck about his divorce and his personal <laughs> life? And now the National Enquirer is getting involved, and it's just this big old thing. It's turning this big old thing. Right. And it's like, you know what? <laughs> it's a total distraction thing. Seriously, here it yeah. is. It, no. This is this is part of it. The National Enquirer is getting involved now. And it's like, you know what, people? They're putting this out in your face 
Because they don't want you to pay attention to something else yeah, that's going keep, on. Keep your pecker out of my face. <laughs> no, they're putting this story in your face because they don't want you to pay attention to what's going on oh, other places. <laughs> they're making hey, anyway. this a big thing, and it's not even a big It's like two rich fucks getting a divorce. Okay, this is not a new scenario. This has been going on since marriage has existed. It's, it, it, you know, two rich fucks are getting divorced. Who gives a shit? Who gives right. a fuck that he has an well, affair? That's I, between those two people. Yeah, it, see, it has nothing I, I to do even, with us. I, I didn't even hear about that part. I, I just, I just it has nothing that. to do with him owning Amazon. That has nothing to do with it. It's it's delving into his personal life. And you know what? I don't give a fuck about his personal life. <laughs> I really don't. Just like I, I don't want people to give a fuck about my personal life, really. You know, unless they truly care about me and you know, are my friend or something. Like, I don't need you knowing about my shit. You know, right. my life. Right. You know, what the fuck? What is this? What is this? Because you're rich and famous, like, people get to fucking put you through the ringer. The media gets to put you through the ringer because you own Amazon. Uh, you know, I, I would have. It's, it's bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit. Anyway, anyway I got another last set here. Okay, let's do that. All right. We'll be back, folks. All right. We will. Stay tuned. Yeah. Do that. Ah, Black Betty. Christopher Amoroso there covering Black Betty for y'all. Uh, before that, we had a song called Stan Alive. It's a Bee Gees cover by uh, Leo Maraccioli. <laughs> Funny stuff. Good stuff. Uh, before that, we had Bachman and Turner, minus the overdrive. Uh, <laughs> I did have Paul Schaefer sitting in on keyboards uh, doing Taking Care of Business. And, uh, boy, I tell you, Randy, looking a little old there. That was back in uh, 2012, 20, 2009, something like that. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, we kicked it off with a Rob Zombie and a sick a bubble gum. Uh, now, I'd like to thank everybody for listening in, tuning in, uh, playing along at the Freakers home game. Especially thank yeah, you. thank you. Sorry. Uh, spe- spe- special thanks to Poxified for calling in and giving us a yeah. story. And, thanks, Pox. Uh, and an extra special thanks to Hal Anthony for doing the recording on his end of the world. Thank you, uh, Hal. Way yep. to come in in a pinch there. Way to uh, help out. Way absolutely. to go, dude. And don't forget, everybody, we're still in the midst of our uh, February donation drive to keep right. the Liberty Media up and going and, and uh, just show your appreciation for all that uh, the stuff here that we do that you like or whatever. Right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, if you got some extra, extra, some some cash somewhere or crypto or whatever, just stay going over to reallibertybd.com. dot com. You'll find the donate button there. Hell, for, five bucks, people. Come yeah, on, whatever, man. Whatever. Five just, bucks, really? Come on. You yeah, can top yeah. up five fucking bucks or, or twelve, twelve bucks, a dollar a month. Uh, yeah, right. Twelve dollars, <laughs> one dollar a month. Whatever, man. Would help greatly. I mean, whatever you like, really. You know, it, it, it's all good. It's all good. We we well, enjoy doing this. I mean, it's not that. No, yeah, oh, we enjoy it. I mean, it's we, we, it's free. We don't get paid to do this. The only reason we we ask for money and donations is because of the server costs and all the other costs that are you know, and it's it's minuscule. It's oh, not like we're CNN or anything. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's on. not like we're Alex Jones here. You know, trying right. to show you. Right. We're not throwing products on here. We're not trying to get you to buy anything. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, no. we we appreciate y'all being here and and, do. and donate or not, we still love y'all. We do donate. You know, do what you can. If you can't do anything, that's fine. Yeah, it's Just, all good. You know, it's all tell good. people other people that you might think would like our Real Liberty Media. Tell them about us. Hell yeah! Come you know, on, I mean on. that's 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 helping out. You know, if you can't help out financially, yeah, whatever, give us a whatever plug works. here and there. You know, right, right, right. That works too. So yeah, thank you all. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yeah, enjoy the shows on RLM. The schedule's up there. We'll be back again next Friday night with more. We will. Peace. Peace. It's had a lot of hands in it.